Hi, welcome everybody. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. We're having another fun time here doing a Extreme Beginner Series video. We're just going to cover the basics and the fundamentals of this glazing technique painting of this gorgeous landscape with some beautiful distant castle buildings in the far distance, nice and light washes in the background, then some really interesting stone walls and this is like a river or a lake in the foreground of the painting. We're going to show you how to do all the reflections, the stone wall, all the beautiful trees, all the details of some branches and limbs and things like that to kind of give your painting a little bit of really, really fine detail, very, very um, ornate fine detail at the end of the painting. So you'll learn all of the um, steps here to get this painting completed. And again, the fun part of this is we're using the glazing technique, which is a very fun and easy technique to learn in watercolor. So if you're just starting here for the first time, welcome. You're going to learn how to do watercolor the way most a lot of professional color, uh, watercolor artists do create paintings is the glazing technique. And you're also going to learn how to create this painting with just a simple three colors, alizarin crimson, cadmium lemon yellow, and French ultramarine blue. Those are the only three colors we use for this entire painting. So you're going to see how you can use just three colors to harmonize all of your colors together and make this painting so that everything blends together and you have a wonderful finished product. So let's uh, get started, okay? All right, we just saw the finished painting. I'm really excited we're gonna be here together painting this uh, wonderful landscape painting with a little bit of water in there, a lake, and uh, could be like an inlet from an ocean. You can kind of use your imagination on this. And also too, always remember, um, use whatever you want to as far as your subject matter. If you want to work for some, from some photographs from online, maybe from some books. Uh, I have my book uh, below in the uh, comment section if you want to check out my book. I have a short video. You can look through all the photographs in my book of my paintings. So you'll see I've got a ton of paintings in my book, all kinds of different subject matter, oceans, flowers, beach scenes, you know, a little bit of everything in there for you. And um, so those are great to work from as well. But I'm just going to work from my imagination here and just think about a few paintings I'm thinking in my mind that I recall back some years ago that I painted. So I'm going to kind of try to make a, an amalgamation of some of the paintings I've created. But we'll show you how easy it is just to get a, a rough sketch going here. And we're just going to use three colors in our palette, and we'll show you that too. So uh, we'll get started, and I kind of covered that too right in the beginning of the video. As you as you know, I kind of covered a few things. I'm going to have a few extra videos in the uh, description below, links to some uh, a couple more of my videos that will give you an idea on some color mixing that we're going to use here. So that's if you want more details on it, or you can just use this video too, because I'm going to cover everything in detail for you right now. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just kind of get our sketch in here. So I'm going to roughly say that I'm going to make my... Um, I'm just going to break my um, painting down in, in space divisions. Usually you'll see me do this all the time. So if you're following on a weekly basis, and it's an Extreme be Beginners video too as well. So even, you know, if you're watching my Extreme Beginners videos, you'll always kind of see that I'm going to sort of right away in the beginning, you're going to kind of think about where you're going to put your space divisions in your, your painting. So I'll use a Sharpie just so you can really kind of clearly see how I break my space divisions down in my painting right from the start. But for, for this painting, I might go a little bit above halfway for my um, horizon line where the water is going to be in the land, in the trees. So let's just say I'm going to go, if this is about halfway, so if we look at this painting and we say, well, that's about halfway, that's pretty close to halfway, then I'm going to go just a little bit up from that, and then I'll make my line here. And this line is just going to let me know here that it's going to be where the land is, you know, some of the trees and the, uh, the shoreline. And then from up from there, then I'll put some more sky wash and a couple distant maybe buildings in the distance. But we'll we'll have a fun time doing all this. And but that's really the main division of the painting painting that I want to have is that little bit above halfway, like that. And I think if I have that, I'm pretty much really set. The other things in the painting are not so much critical because we're just going to have a fun time sort of putting some different subject matter into this, some trees, some distant, uh, maybe a distant uh, building, some uh, uh, structures, some other things like bridges. We'll do a few different interesting uh, features in this painting. So the next thing I do is I'll just, I'll grab my uh, mechanical pencil here and I'll just maybe 
make a, a line across my painting like this. You can also, if you want to, if you want to be a little more accurate. I know sometimes um, as artists, we, when we're beginning, especially in our when we're first starting out painting, sometimes we'll need a ruler to kind of just measure some things here and there, and that's fine. You can do that. So, you know, I can say, all right, here, I'm going to come up from the bottom of my painting where my tape is. Let me, let me make a mark around my tape. So now you can kind of see this is the edge of my tape that I've taped around my paper. And I'll make a line around there like that. And then I will just measure up to this line here so we have an idea of where that line is, which is, again, we set about a little bit above halfway. So that's five inches up from the bottom of the paper. And I'll just come over here and do the same thing and mark five inches up here above the bottom of the painting, the bottom of the rectangle, we could, we could say. And then we can also take a uh, ruler. We can find a ruler that if we want to. You can use a T-square ruler if you want, like this. But I'm just going to line up those two hash marks, one over here, one over here. And maybe this one here is a little higher. So I'll, I'll just go a little bit higher up here. I can see it's a little bit uh, higher over this way. All right, that's good there. And we'll make a line across there, as you can see. All right, so we have that line across there. That's just going to be our, like the shoreline, the distant shoreline. And then what we're going to do is work from this point here, this distant shoreline, and build the rest of the composition. And again, we're going to have a fun time doing a, like a, um, like a landscape with some water. Maybe it's like an inlet from an ocean or a bay, or it could be a lake. You can, you know, think of it any way you want to. Just some water we'll have. Maybe a boat, we'll put a boat in here, maybe. So, what I'll do is, I'm going to start by maybe making a decision of making a building in the distance over here. Maybe not halfway, but a little bit left of the center of the paper. So if this is the center of the paper, I just want to come over a little bit left of the center for a, for a building we, we might create. So I'll do that. And there's going to be some trees here. So I'm going to make some trees up here like so. So you can kind of make some trees over here on the left. And, and then maybe we'll make a building over here. Like this. Like that. And maybe it's a distant church. Or it just could be a castle or something like that. You might have a, might be a castle in the distance here. You can create your own happy ideas on what the, what these are going to be, these features. But of course, it's structures. It's it's buildings we're going to make here. So I'm just going to get a general idea of like a um, kind of like a castle with a spire on top and then some more indications of like some roofs tops of the building maybe there's another spire over here and another feature another conical roof and then from there maybe we'll have another tree shape over here so we'll make another tree shape over here like so and then we'll have more tree shapes over here that kind of come up to the left. So we'll have like that. Okay. Now you can kind of see how we can start to build a little bit of a, a an embankment here where the shoreline is. And we'll put that line across here. And we'll do that. We'll make an embankment over here. Then over here maybe we're going to have maybe a bridge. Maybe there's a bridge over here. Let's create a bridge. Maybe it goes, it starts over here. And it's on the land. It could be like a, a railroad bridge or um, something like that. You can use your ruler again. Maybe come across here. You're just going to put like a parallel line across here to make it like a bridge type feature. So a level line across here. And the only thing you would worry about is you want to keep it parallel to this line here, your shoreline. So you could always measure that too if you want to, to make sure you're staying on a straight parallel line level across the picture. So that's half inch. And half inch so that's good so that level line is kind of set and it looks good and then we'll have another some trees and bushes over here so it kind of 
this uh, bridge over here. It could be just a bridge. It could be, again, a, a bridge with a train trestle across it. And we'll put a couple more lines there just to kind of give it a little more bulk, bulk to it. And uh, we can maybe it may, we could make that concrete. So there might be some concrete structure there, and then maybe some arches like this, like that. And that's sort of in the distance back behind these sh this shoreline over here. And then we have the water here. So this is your water line here. And then back here is the bridge. And then in the further distance, of course, is these structures and the buildings, and you can make that softer. We'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to make these background features softer and diffused looking, and lighter and cooler in color. And then as we get closer, we make things darker to give ourselves the illusion of three-dimensional quality to the painting. Now we could also start to make another structure maybe over here on the left hand side just something else to maybe uh, kind of fill in, the, fill in the scene here so this will maybe make a little structure here and this will be closer here this could be like a, a wall coming into the picture this could be a, like a, a wall over here Okay, so we have a wall there, and then uh, perhaps uh, maybe we'll have another wall over here too. So we'll make another wall up here. There's some more ground over here. There's water back here. This might be some grass, and then we'll have another wall over here coming this way, and it comes out like this. So what this does now is we're making some structural kind of um, features in our painting. These are like walls and you can kind of see they're on an angle like this. So what that kind of does is it makes a nice um, lead. It's like a leading bit of lines that kind of lead our attention into the center of the painting. So we'll make this our focal point right here in the painting. So we want the viewer to look in here. So we're going to have some lines that kind of direct the viewer's eye when they look at our painting. They go right away and they feel like they're being uh, led into the painting by some angles. And then we have our focal point here which we're going to make some really beautiful colors and we'll get into that in a few minutes we're going to mix up our paints very soon but this is basically the thing you want to do first is tackle your your drawing your sketch and um you know this is you can kind of see it's nothing too um complex it's basically some some walls here some abutting walls here these could be sea walls where the water maybe the boats pull up and dock along the walls here and we're having some some more trees over here so we'll have some more trees over here on top of this wall and we'll always remember too in our paintings let's keep the sides of the paintings over here on both sides of this let's keep this the left and the right side kind of mellow not too much detail and we'll put most of our focus in here in the center of the painting. That's kind of where we want to put our uh, um, most of our detail and most of our work that we're going to do, where we're going to have details and interesting color contrasts and things like that. We'll put that right here in the middle. And then on the sides, we'll keep this kind of soft, low key, so that the viewer doesn't kind of, if someone's going to be viewing our painting, if it's in a gallery, maybe you're going to be starting to create some paintings for gallery shows or contests. Maybe there's local art. I hope you'll get involved with local art associations and art classes and things like that. That's where you'll kind of meet up with some other fellow artists and they're going to kind of, um, you know, you might learn about some gallery showings and you might be able to show your work and put some work up on some um, uh gallery walls to for contests and things like that you can win prizes for your artwork as you're starting to learn about watercolor in your painting and creating some really um, beautiful paintings get your work out there kind of you know show it um, meet up with other artists if you can there's always great usually every town has like a local um, art uh, scene going on where you have some people that are teaching art maybe at the local uh uh, educational institutions, maybe a high school might have classes or a local college might have classes on art, watercolor paintings, stuff like that. I just put that in as like a um, 
extra little bit of um, tidbit of information here on my video because I know maybe a lot of you might not have heard about this before and these are great ways you can also get out and really have some fun meeting up with fellow artists and also um, you know putting your art and getting it out there and um, you know enjoying the whole fun of art which is also getting together with other artists too fellow artists and having fun and sharing your artwork and and also uh, maybe even getting into some competitions too or or just showing your art and maybe selling some of your paintings and some of your works all right, so I think we have our drawing pretty much complete. I would say, if anything, I might want to just do a couple reflections here. So I'm going to take this part of this building and just, you know what, let's take a quick break. I always like to take a quick break. Let's come back after a few minutes and we'll um, finish up our sketch. I think I just want to sketch a few things in the water here. So we're going to sketch a few reflections of some of this um subject matter trees and, and structure and build and buildings and uh, spires and things down into the water so before i do that let's take a quick break and then we'll come right back and get started again all right so we kind of covered um the sketch so far we get we have that completed now we just went over a few kind of directional lines that we made a little bit darker over here especially because we're working on camera here and i want you to see the dark lines the pencil lines going into the picture and um, that we have set and then we also just did a little bit of reflection work so all we did was really to make it simple when you're doing reflections wherever your shoreline is and our shoreline is right back here you can kind of see that here that's the shoreline here that we created first off with our line right here a little bit above halfway in the picture the shoreline uh, we just kind of measured the um, how high the spires of this castle were above the shoreline and that was three inches so then we just went down three inches here and made our little bit of a hash mark there at three inches and then we know that we want to make our reflections of this spire spire and this castle this uh, maybe this is like a um, tower a castle tower here and then some other features of the castle here we just want to mirror that down so you just want to sort of kind of have the same amount of distance between the top of this structure down to the water that happens to be inch and three quarters you come down the same thing inch and three quarters here and that's the top there so you just make a couple indications of where some of this is going to be the trees the trees are one inch above the shoreline here you come down here and say okay one inch about here is the trees there up here what's the top of the trees up here three inches you come down three inches top of the trees here so this way when we're painting in our reflections of the trees into the water you'll just remember that it's going to be pretty much equal distance down to the shoreline and then out to the um into the water that's really a simple concept and uh, that's a good tidbit of information whenever you're kind of dealing with some water features so we're going to now move on to um the painting portion here so i'll have a couple of videos below uh in the comment section below you can click on that'll kind of go over the color wheel i'll just again i'll just quickly show you the color wheels that we use um nothing too fancy very simple to like grasp so if you go and check out my video on color wheels it'll just kind of you'll see how we create all the colors of the color wheel um with these two right here these basic two color wheels and all we're doing is using different um red yellow and blue colors so here we have alizarin crimson cadmium lemon yellow and french ultramarine blue and then on this color wheel i'm sorry about that alizarin uh, crimson cadmium ye lemon yellow and french ultramarine blue to make all of our secondary and tertiary colors to kind of get those are the fancy terms basically we're just taking these colors mixing them together and making other colors out further from this color wheel and then and then this is the other color wheel which is the same idea just instead of alizarin crimson we used cadmium red and here we use cadmium yellow versus cadmium lemon yellow and here we use cobalt blue instead of french ultramarine blue so we just changed our three primary colors here on this color wheel to mix out all the other colors that you'll see here around the color wheel and also to the uh, other secondary colors that are within the wheel I'll explain it in that video if you want to click on that one to kind of get the idea of it and that's how we're going to kind of create our three colors here and I always say if you can use just three colors in your painting and then mix mix those three colors out to create a 
um, color wheel mixture like we're using here, your colors will always look absolutely uh, incredible in your paintings. You won't have any kind of um, disharmony in your paintings. Your colors will always harmonize. So no matter how you mix those three colors and whatever combinations you use, it's always going to look really good. And we're going to show you just how that works right now. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just grab my three colors. And I, I mentioned that I was going to probably use the alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson. Alizarin Crimson, French Ultramarine Blue, and Cadmium Yellow Lemon. So the lemony, cool yellow, um, French Ultramarine Blue is a kind of a warmer blue, which has a little more red in it, kind of toward the purple. And then we have the um, Alizarin Crimson, which is kind of a... Uh, Alizarin Crimson would be considered, I think, a um, cool, cool red. So it's a little bit more toward the blue than it is the yellow and red. Or I mean yellow, I should say. So let's get our colors out. We're going to just keep it real simple. And we will use the concept here since we're working. Let's just put our color wheel out here. So we're using these. We're using this color wheel. Cadmium red. Let's get that out on the, pa on the palette. And all I'm going to do here too, just so I don't uh, lose track, I want to make sure I stay in the camera here. I just want to make sure I put this here on the top. I don't want to mix out my paints beyond what you can see and I just want to make sure so I'm going to make sure I keep that like that there we go I just want to make sure I keep my my color mixtures within the uh, view of your of the camera here okay so first thing we'll do we'll mix our we'll squeeze out some cadmium red like that this is Windsor & Newton. I should say I use mostly Windsor & Newton and Holbein paints. So between Windsor & Newton, probably 70% of my paints are Windsor & Newton. And incidentally, I have all my art supplies down below in the comment section. You can check out all my colors, my paint tubes that I use, my brushes, papers. I have everything down below. You click on those links below in the comment section. You might have, you might have to click the word more. If you click the word more, you'll see a lot more information. And you'll see all the links to all the art supplies that I use. Those are my personal art supplies that I use, and I vouch for them. They're great. You'll never have a problem with them. Um, so I wouldn't put them down below in the comment section if they don't work great. And uh, you can also research other art supplies too, though. Maybe sometimes you want to use something a little different or whatever. No problem. But I do put what I use, and this way you kind of can see what I'm using all the time for, for my paintings. And uh, now we're going to do the French Ultramarine Blue here. So we'll set it up the same as we have here on the color wheel. Okay, French Ultramarine Blue. And you can always add more paint to this. So always remember that as you're working your color wheel. If you have to add more paint, that's no problem. Once you're working and doing your painting, you can add more paint as you go. And then we're going to use our Cadmium Yellow Lemon up here. Like that. Okay, so we got three primary colors that we're going to use. And that's all the colors we're going to use. And actually your three primary colors basically are the three colors that you will create any other color from. So whenever paint manufacturers are mixing colors and they're coming up with all interesting different types of colors, they're always going to start with these three and then use some combination of these three to, to create the other colors that they're going to they're going to create for the most part. So you can, always you can remember red, yellow, and blue. That's going to be all you need to mix out all the rest of the colors you'll ever need in any painting you've ever you'll ever do. So just to keep that uh, in mind. And that's how we're going to keep it simple here on this uh, video when we're doing this painting. So the next thing I'm going to do is take a brush, fresh clean water. Let me grab a bottled water. I'm sorry I had to step away for a second here to get that water across from the studio. So now I've just put some fresh clean water in my water pail, my water bucket here crystal clear water and we're going to start out and when you're mixing all your colors now to create sort of like your colors you're going to use for your painting you'll just remember you'll change your water when you're done mixing out all your colors on your palette like we're going to do now and then you'll start again with the fresh clean color or fresh clean water when you're creating your painting so we're going to use this as our guide how we're just going to kind of get started with mixing our colors okay we're going to start out with red 
an orange. We're going to make an orange from a yellow and a red. So let's take the red, come over here, and then we rinse off our brush quick. You can always use it. I use either a tissue or a paper towel. I'm going to move kind of fast here so that we don't waste too much time mixing our colors, but I, I didn't want to, you know, bore everybody here. Okay, so we got red and then yellow. That's going to make our orange. So then we're going to have our orange here. So we're just basically creating the color wheel right now. So red, alizarin crimson, orange, which is alizarin crimson and cadmium lemon yellow. So now we're over here, cadmium lemon yellow here. Next, we're going to make green. So how are we going to make the green? Yellow and blue. So we're going to take yellow, come over here like this, like that, and then touch a blue in there to make our green. How does that green look? That green looks pretty good. Maybe you, maybe you might want to make it a little more cooler with that little more blue. But that is kind of like a good green right there, like a medium green, like that. Okay, looks good. Rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water here. Now we're going to go with our violet. So we're going to take our French ultramarine blue and our red. Let's take our red, come over here. We'll make our red here like this. And alizarin crimson and French ultramarine blue make an incredible violet color. Probably the best two combinations that you can have to make a purple or a violet. And look at how beautiful that is, okay? So that's that's it. We have now this entire color wheel we have mixed. We didn't even have to worry about the red, yellow, and green when we started because that's just straight tube paint. Red, yellow, and green. Uh, red, yellow, and blue. So you have alizarin crimson, cadmium uh, yellow lemon, and French ultramarine blue. That's just your straight paint. That's good. Then we wanted to create the orange, the green, and the violet. How did we do that? We just took a little of the red and the yellow. We made our orange. We wanted to make our green. We touched, we put together a little bit of the yellow and the blue. We get our green. We wanted to make our violet. Simple enough. We have a little bit of a lizard and crimson, a little bit of the French ultramarine blue. We get our violet color. And that's all. Now the only other thing we're going to worry about is mixing out our tertiary colors, which are one more mixture out from that main color wheel we just created. So if you can imagine, this is the main color wheel right here that we just created. Like that. We could even take a little bit of the purple and go around like this. I just want to show you that's the color wheel right there. Right here. That's how simple that to get those colors. Then all we have to do to mix our tertiary colors is just for this tertiary color let's start up here at the top this is a yellow orange how do we make yellow orange we mix orange and yellow so we take this orange and we mix that with some yellow and as you can see that yellow orange is a little more, uh, you know, toward the yellow. It's not quite as dark orange as this. It's a little more toward the yellow, but it still has, you know, that orangey kind of feel to it. And you can add a little more lemon yellow. You kind of mix it till you get it just right, but you can kind of see, right, that's a little bit more toward the yellow than it is orange. Okay, so we have that one mixed. Then we're going to mix the yellow-green. How are we going to mix the yellow green? We're going to take the yellow and the green and mix that together. So when you mix yellow and green together in equal parts, we'll pick up some of that green, like that, and then we're going to pick up some yellow. And then that yellow green actually is a little bit, you know, more yellow than it is green because we made it yellow plus the green and then we're going to come down and we're going to say the same thing we're going to make blue green how are we going to make blue green we're going to mix blue green together simple enough blue straight blue and i rinse off my brush dry off a little bit of the water on a paper towel or tissue and then i pick up some of that green 
And then as you can see, that's our blue-green. Beautiful. Um, again, it's more more blue than green because we're mixing blue and green, and it, so it so, sort of starts to now push towards the, the blue, blue-green. So a little bit more blue in there. Then the next tertiary color is going to be uh, blue-violet. Again, the same thing. We're going to take violet here. And then add blue to it. Make a little more violet if you have to. A little more blue. And there you can see that's Okay, that's blue violet. If you have to mix a little bit, it might take a few tries to kind of get it just right. So that's more of a blue violet there than violet. This is violet, like that. And you can see this has got a little touch more of blue in it. So that's our blue violet. Then we're going to go with our red violet. We'll take our violet again here. And then add a little more red to that. That's the red violet. Okay, you can see how that's violet, but a little bit more toward the red because now we've added a little more of that violet to the violet color. There we have it. And one more. Let's do red orange. So we take, um, maybe we might need to make a little more orange here. So we'll take some red and yellow to make our orange. Like that. Okay, so we have our orange. Now we're going to make our red orange. So we take orange and then add just a touch more red. And there we have it, red orange. So now you see we've got all the colors here on our palette. The primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Secondary colors, orange, green, violet. From that here and then our tertiary colors, and we just mix those out over here on the outer side of that circle of the primaries and secondaries. And that's really all you have to do. And then you can take these colors and you can add a little bit of water to them if you wanted to, to sort of thin them out a little bit. Or you can keep them thicker if you want, but that's how you'll start to create your washes from all of these colors that you're creating here. And you always have your primaries right here that are rich and thick, like that. Okay, so now we're going to start the painting, we're, and we're going to work right from these colors right here, again, which are all the same as this color wheel. I have them all labeled here, so again, if you check out the video that I've created just recently, um, the color wheels, you can take your time and you can make these color wheel charts. I think it's a great idea if you want to. You, you can create these color wheel charts. You can make many of these. I have two only, but there's many more because there's a lot more different types of reds, right? There's Rose Matter. We're using Alizarin Crimson. This color wheel uses Cadmium Red, Cadmium Yellow, Cobalt Blue. This one here, again, that we used is Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Lemon Yellow. French Ultramarine Blue, you could make a, a color wheel with like, um, what else do we have? You could use um, Cerulean Blue, uh, Rose Matter, and maybe like Yellow Ochre for your three primaries. So you get creative. You can mi mix up as many different color combinations as you want to to um, suit yourself. But I think these are fine. So what we'll do is we'll take another quick break, and then when we come back we'll start our painting, and you'll see how we're going to work all these colors here to make one beautiful um, group of washes with all these colors from just these three primaries and you'll see how the whole painting is just going to look harmonized together the colors are going to work beautifully to make your painting look absolutely fantastic so we'll come right back and start the painting all right so next thing we're going to do we're just getting back uh, rolling here I will take this muddy, murky water, empty it out in the bucket, 
and we'll start with fresh clean water when we're doing the glazing technique especially when you're starting out your first glazing your first wash you'll need that crystal clear water so you want to start out with fresh crystal clear water in your water pail to, to do the first glazing on your watercolor painting so what you'll do is you'll take this water and you'll use a flat brush here I'm using a da Vinci um, number let's see what this might be this is a, a number 30 that's a 30 millimeter paintbrush you can use um, a lot there's old I have my brushes all, again down below in the description box I have all my brushes that I use you can use the um, Princeton Art and Brush Company uh, synthetic brushes this is a smaller version but I have a larger version that's kind of about the same size as this but it's up to you but what you'll do is you'll just take the water and just dampen your paper all the way across so you just take your water your clean fresh crystal clear water and you'll just cover the whole paper with fresh clean water and you don't have to worry about the pencil smudging or anything like that it's going to be fine once you're done painting over this whole painting you won't see any um, you know pencil lines or smudges or anything like that you just want to cover the whole paper with a fresh clean coat of water and you know you just want to cover the paper and dampen it you don't want to like flood it out too much with too much you know too much water just enough to dampen the whole paper all the way from the top to the bottom you can go across like this with the damp water and then you can even go up and down like this just to cover all the paper make sure the whole surface of your paper is dampened nicely like that okay that's simple enough all right we have that then what we'll do is I'll usually take a paper towel or a tissue and I'll just kind of mop up any of the water that's around here around the edges of the paper that might have like kind of uh, float off the paper off the edges just to keep my table a little bit neat here so I don't have too much water puddles and things like that and once you do that you're pretty much set now you're ready to start mixing the colors for the painting that you're going to want what I think we're going to want to do is make this more like a sunrise type of painting or a sunset style painting so we're not going to make it like a bright colorful like um, bright blue sky or anything like that we're going to keep it low key in a sense so this is going to be like a low key painting and again this is the glazing technique so right away you're learning if you're an extreme beginner and if it's your first time here welcome thanks so much for coming by I don't I'm sometimes I know some of you are coming by for the first time you've never seen my videos before you're at the right place at the right time we're creating videos just like this week after week month after month and year after year so if you're joining along every week as we're painting you're just going to learn all the fundamentals and basics of watercolor so trust in that that if you're just doing the basics on a constant um, routine you're going to absolutely learn watercolor after maybe six months to a year you should have learned quite a few fundamentals that you're going to have those working for you and you'll be creating some good paintings for yourself and then you just keep working and learning more of the nuances of things and you'll buy uh, you know before you know it you're going to have most of the basic fundamentals and, and uh, techniques of watercolor um, under your belt so again we have the paper all damp wet then we're going to come in and we're going to say let's make it again something where let's do the purples and the greens like this we'll mix a little bit of water in there and this first wash is going to be very light very light a little bit of the greens so I'm sort of getting like my my first wash and I'm sort of sort of looking like what do I want to do here maybe some orange too definitely going to want to use some orange all right so you can do that so you just get your whole palette activated like I would call that activating your whole palette with some of these colors and then you just start going across like this doing a light wash first so we're not going to want to do a really dark wash we're going to want to keep this really super light as you can see that's very light maybe a little more purple so you can kind of mix your blue and red to get yourself kind of a purplish like that that might be a few little bits of purple across there and the same thing here you'll, add, you'll just bring whatever you create up top in the sky you're going to bring that down into the water 
like that. And that's all you have to do is that first wash. You just bring it down into the water like that. And again, I just used all of the washes that we had mixed out here, the tertiary colors especially. Lots of golds, oranges, green, purples. We're actually using all the colors of the color wheel right now. Now you can see how that looks good. It's just a conglomeration, a mixture of all the three colors that we started with on the paper in a very light wash, not dark. The next washes we'll go over this are going to be darker, but we have to let this dry now. So that's the key now. Once you get this light wash across your whole painting, which is your, it's kind of like your under glazing, which is kind of going to glow and be like your under painting. And then as you go over with the darker washes on top of this, those this wash here is going to kind of glow and kind of shine through the other uh, darker washes that you're going to have on top of this. So let's let this dry. Now the key is you can use a blow dryer to dry this off and you can keep working five minutes later or you can let this dry like two hours. So it's up to you if you want to take a two hour break or come back the next day or two. You might, you know, maybe come back the next day and you can paint on this because it'll be all dry. Or if you use again a blow dryer in five or ten minutes you'll have this all dry and then you can start painting again and doing the darker washes, the second and third glazings. So let's uh, take a break now. I'm going to let this dry. I'm probably going to use a blow dryer to dry this off a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll start to work in our darker glazings and you're going to see how the painting is going to really come together and look absolutely beautiful when we start to get in our darker washes and um, you know some of the reflections in the water. It's going to really look fantastic. So let's uh, again take a break. Uh, and it's up to you if you want to let it dry a few hours or if you just want to use a blow dryer to dry it off, that's fine. As long as the paper isn't damp anymore. So when you touch the paper, when it's dry, it should be dry to the touch. You wouldn't want anything like damp where there's water when you touch it. It shouldn't be where you have any water on your hands at all. So that's just the, the key is it should be dry to the touch, the whole paper, the whole watercolor paper that you're using. And I happen to be using, uh, here is Arches uh, Rough Paper. So I'm using Arches Rough on this painting. I use Arches Rough a lot. I use Fabriano also. Fabriano, this actually is Fabriano, I'm sorry. This is actually Fabriano uh, Extra White Rough Paper. And I also use Arches Rough Paper, excellent paper too as well. And I'm, um, you know, so let's come back in just a few minutes and we'll get our second uh, glazing started. Okay, be right back. All right, so we're getting uh, started again. And now we, we have recognized that we this paper is now 100% like dry as far as to the touch. So I can just do this across the whole paper and there's no dampness at all on the, on the watercolor paper. I used a blow dryer. And um, it was very, if you could imagine, when we put that first glazing on just a second ago or a few minutes ago, the paper after you put that first, uh, first wash of water the clear crystal clear water on top and then you add all your colors to that light light washes of color the paper is going to be buckled and it's going to be all wavy right because the paper is soaking up all the water and it's expanding and it's becoming buckled and wavy the key is now when it's dry after blow drying it for about three four five minutes it's still a tiny bit wavy but very little and it's dry to the touch that's how you have to have it when you're coming over now for your second uh um, wash and, and it's incredibly more helpful now that the buckles in the paper have settled and now you pretty much have almost the, the same you know paper as you started with so there's not you know very little waviness to the paper okay that's all I wanted to just mention that's very helpful and then what we're going to do is now we're going to start to go in with our medium and darker washes so you can do it um, you know I'm just going to start here and mix up an orangey red with some green. So I'll use my yellow and red to get, to get an orange like that. And again, this is the simplicity if you're, if you're just starting out. Again, uh, I'm happy you're here. If you're just started out, you're at the right place at the right time. 
And, uh, you know, if you've been here a few years or, you know, or so on, extreme beginner videos, you're just going to see that how you can just use your three primary colors and just use these and mix these around and you're going to get all the colors you really actually need. I do, you'll see my other videos I create on YouTube, like more of the advanced uh, videos or even a lot of the extreme beginners videos. I create um, videos where I use many different colors in my palette. You'll see that. But here you'll just notice that it's as simple as if you have any problems with colors in your paintings, where it's, you kind of feel like your colors look blotchy or different, like dis they're not harmonizing that night, you know, that well, this is the solution right here. If you're just using red, yellow, and blue the whole time, mixing your colors, doesn't matter how you mix them, you can get as sloppy as you want, mixing them is whatever. As long as you're using these three colors, you're gonna, your whole painting is going to look like really fantastic. And we're going to, well, let's keep going here and we'll see how it actually works. So we've got the orange. We'll mix up a little bit of the orange and yellow here. A little bit of the blue. So we'll get a little bit of a greenish mix in that to kind of mellow out that orangey color. And then we're just going to start doing our distant, which should be cooler. So let's get that a little bit of more blue in there. We want a little bit of a cooler color here for this distant uh, and I'm using a, a 5 8 inch the Princeton Art and Brush Company synthetic flat brush and that gives us the uh, really nice and then as we do this you'll see I'm just using the flat brush and you can start mixing around some orange and but it's going to want to we're going to want to have a little more purple even too we want some purple in there we're going to want this to be cooler cooler so we want more of a blue or green either blue or green for these colors really you can always blot up a little bit of paint if you want it lighter for the distance colors like that you want some more blue in there. You probably want more blue and purple, purplish blue, even green. So we're going to make this look more like architectural. So these are, if you want to have, if you're, if you're painting anything with buildings, houses, structures, flat brushes are the way to go. You can get some great looking straight lines. You can get your spires like that like this and again these are a little bit lighter now these washes that I'm doing in the distance here you're gonna want the, you're gonna want these lighter because they're sort of they're sort of further away and they're cooler too so you can add in a little bit of blue add a little more blue into these these things like this and, and we want we won't want to make them dark so you can always blot up a little bit like that so that they stay light Okay, and then let's make some green because we're going to start to see some. And the green that we're going to want to create here is going to be a little more of a cooler green. So you want to make that green a little bit toward the cool side. And that would kind of be like toward the blue. So you make a green like we had in our color wheel. I'll just kind of bring out the color wheel just one more time. So here we're going to make a cooler green. So we're going to want to use the tertiary green, the tertiary green, which is the blue green. So that means you mix your yellow and blue to get your green. And then you add a little more blue to it to get it more of a cooler, bluer green. And then those are the colors you're going to want to use here because they're more in the distance over here, those greens. So they're a little cooler in color. And then as you get closer, they become more warmer greens. So you'll see how that will benefit you as you're creating your painting and then as and again we're doing all the painting I guess we'll just we'll just do this one brush we'll just use this one 5 8 inch flat brush and we'll create the whole painting with that one brush besides the you know the beginning of the we used a little bit of a larger brush here for the first wash because we wanted to cover the whole paper so if we were to use this 
smaller 5 8 inch brush right to try to cover this with all the clear clear water and then all the washes the light washes for that first glazing this is the key you want to use a larger brush to kind of get it done you know efficiently and quickly now that we're doing more of the finer tuned painting we're going to use a smaller brush a 5 8 inch brush which, which is halfway that's about half the size and then we're going to do that and then you'll see we're going to have this those are more the distant colors. You can blot up again with the tissue here and there to get that effect of the distant. And then we're going to start to create darker washes. So now we're going to take blue, red, and yellow. And more the blue and some of that green. So now we're getting like a muddy purple and you kind of just mix it around until you kind of get that feel that you need which is going to be mostly blue. We want it really dark so keep using that blue to get your darker. Blue is going to get you the darkest dark you can get with some red too. And yellow so but blue is the darkest. Obviously your French in these three colors here, your French ultramarine blue is absolutely, you can see it in the color wheel how dark that is, right? So that blue, if you squint your eyes and look at this, that blue is much darker than the yellow or the red. So if you have to get a really dark color in your painting, you know you have to use a lot of the blue. And that's what I'm doing. I'm using a lot of blue and then trying to get it to look a little bit more, you know, I don't want it to be all blue. I want it to have the green and the red mixed with the blue. And that's where we're going to get those darker darks over here. Like this. So we're going to start to create some really beautiful darks. Maybe over here too. I want to get some really nice darks in this painting. And we'll go right down to where the... Um, where the... I guess I would call that like the... the there's the shoreline here. This is the shoreline. We could go with some dark there, like that. And then the underside of these trees, I want it to be kind of really dark over here. So I'm using that thick paint. That's really thick paint right here. It's almost like no water, mostly thick paint. So if you can imagine your darkest darks now that we're creating here and here is basically straight paint, not much water at all to get those darks and it's mostly blue but you have a lot of red and green in there too and you can add in you know you can mix it up a little bit so that it's not all one mixture you know you can kinda but I think that's fine if you can get that concept of straight paint straight tube paint and no water just a damp brush while you're mixing this You'll see how we get, you can see the beautiful darks we have right here. And then we'll make some dark indications under here, which are the bri the bridge here, the, the arches under the bridge. You can use this, you could also um, grab another brush, you can grab a um, round brush that's got a little more of a pointy end on it. And this way you can do a little bit of an easier time getting your arches underneath these bridges like this. And maybe we'll make another couple arches there. Like that. Okay. And then we'll keep mixing these greens. Now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get some more some of that middle green like that. You see how I changed the greens? How we went from that really dark green now we're going with the the medium green like this. And we just scrub it on the paper circular motions like this up 
here like this. Then we're going to get a little more yellow in there. Let's make some more golden like that. Maybe a little bit of red in there too, like an orangey. Kind of keep it a little warmer. Like that. Okay. How does that look? Back home you're thinking to yourself, yes, this does look good. And again, you you know, you can do circular motions with your brush. That gives, gives you a really nice feel of trees, things like that, limbs, branches. We'll go over with a finer tune brush too. We, we'll go with a needlepoint brush next. And then we'll use a little more of that lemony yellow, right? So that we kind of have a mixture of colors here. Circular motions, leave some white paper showing through. Like this. Like that. Take some splashes, get some paint on the brush with some water so you have a little bit of water in there it doesn't have to be flooded with water but enough water you can see what I'm doing there right and then splash some paint on there take some dark paint get some more water like this it's got to be a little bit puddly to get your splashes in there and do some splashes on there get some up there over here you can do some finger painting do some finger tapping on there to get some more texture. Like that. Okay. Looks good. And then a little more. We're going to have some more trees in front of these over here. Uh, in front of this structure is over here. This castle. A little more bits of a uh, want a little bit of sh like Then I'm going to go across with this bridge. I'm going to make some just some parallel lines like that. Then over here, we'll do some more. A little more yellow up here. And then we get a little more high intensity color. I would leave the high intensity color toward the center of, of this here. So if you want to add some high intensity yellow, like that, I would leave it toward the center of the painting so that it kind of spruces up things around the middle of the painting where you want the viewer. You can get some orange in there too, like that. Now we can get some more lemony yellow over here. that so that's some kind of bright looking uh, color for the closer the close this feels closer now the effect it gives you adding high intensity yellow this gives you the feeling of like that the uh, we're closer now like to the painting uh, to the um, foreground here. So the foreground is much more high intensity color, brighter looking vivid. The distant colors here are more like grayish colors, bluish colors kind of like faded. You can kind of see how the distant colors are in the back of the painting are very lighter and they're more like a grayish looking the colors. They're not like bright and high intensity. Now that we're in the foreground here, we're right up close. 
that's when we're doing some of these more brighter looking uh, colors and you can just kind of pretend there's some flowers and things like that over here and plants and stuff like this along this wall so there's some walls here and then uh, I think that's pretty much looking good I think the next thing we'll do is we'll empty our water out because the water I have in my water bucket is pretty murky so now I want to have some fresh water and what we'll do is we're going to create the effect of the um, reflections of the trees and the buildings in the water so that the way we're going to do that is we're going to wet the paper again a second time and uh, you'll see how we're going to do that in just a second I think we've been working about 20 minutes so yes we've been working almost an hour now maybe a little more than an hour but it's well worth it if we're going to get a really good result from our, for our painting the first thing we said was these three colors the blue red and yellow if we have those three colors we're really going to have an easy time making all the colors harmonize in our painting and I think you already see that it's going to once we're finished with the water and the reflections in the water below here you're going to see how everything flows together and looks absolutely incredible so let's get started in a few minutes we're just going to take a break I'm going to grab some more blue I need more blue so I have to go find some more blue over in my um, studio and then I'll get that out into the palette and then we'll finish up I think we're pretty much 90% done now All right, so we're pretty much finishing up now. We're gonna just go in, again, I changed out my water so that I have crystal clear water now in my water bucket, my water container. And again, I'm gonna go back to this larger brush. This is a number 30 Da Vinci uh, flat brush, synthetic. I just wanna make sure I can get some good water reflections here. So I'm gonna take the paper and dampen it wherever the water is. So these walls I'm gonna leave dry. I'm not gonna do anything with those going to leave those walls just dry paper for right now and I'm just going to get the the rest of the paper here with a little bit of water damp water okay so once I dampen up the paper like that the whole thing here in between the walls like that and then under the walls here on each side and then over the whole bottom area here that is all we need now we see the pencil lines that we did put in before that gives us where this tower is here and the tree tops over here so now we're going to put the reflections in and we'll use the same brush we've been using the 5 8 inch flat brush and again we're going to mix the same colors I added a little more blue while we were away for a second so I just want to make sure I can get some more green mixture so I'll put the green there okay so we have the green a little bit of red in there okay so we'll mix a little bit of the green the red yellow blue of course blue lots of blue but we want to have a variety of colors we don't want to go with a boring just like one mix of like blue green or something you know get some reds out on the the mix over here kind of a purpley green blue blue green over here maybe a little more yellow green there so this way we have a good mixture but it's more like the shadowy colors which are kind of the more green so then we just start picking up this and i think we don't have to really And we can use some of the orange too. So essentially, I'm going to do the shape of the tower over here like that. I'm going to leave a little bit of white paper along this here, the edge of the water. Okay, working in a little more of the green there. Okay, so you can kind of see I'm taking this and reflecting it down in the water. And then the same thing over here. Let 
maybe a little bit darker along the bottom of the wall here. Same thing here. Now with the wall there, I think we could leave that white paper like this. So I would blot that up. I would leave that lighter, uh, you know, I would leave that lighter, but I would leave it like that. I would leave it, you know, a little bit darker. The, uh, and then I would just take some water and splash it on. This is pretty much here reflected down. If you, if you go over a spot, just lift it up a little bit with the tissue. We're going to try to keep that wall reflecting down in there like that. Like this. I think that's a good representation of the, the, the shadow of the um, reflection down in the water. Then I just take some more water straight from my water bucket and splash it on. I just fill my brush up with water and then splash it down like that. Like this. Then you can kind of look and kind of ask yourself if that's looking good. You can take a paper towel and make a little more of a precise you can make a precise like square edge like this with your paper towel and then get more of a for the reflection of the wall you can kind of do a little more of a like that and the same thing here and then since we do that then we can even just do a little bit of some splashes on the wall like this, make it some texture. We use our finger tapping techniques like that. Same thing over here. If that paint flows out, try to do the same thing, lift it up a little bit like that. But when it comes to reflections and water and things like that, you don't have to get too worried um, about a little bit of orange here. So we're just going to kind of make these walls feel like they're like stone or mortar or something, you know, like just to give them some texture, a little bit of splashing, warm and cool colors. So you, you want to get some oranges in there too for your walls here. So orange and greens, a little bit of blue. So you just kind of a mixture, but leave them light. So we wanted to leave these light, these walls. that we want to leave them light color like that and same thing we want to make sure we keep a tabs on this we might have to you might have to kind of just keep a, an eye on this here where the reflection is here in the water so you see how I'm kind of lifting up again with the um, paint and that's because the paint is going to keep since the whole area here that we made damp with water the paints going to always want to flow into those areas that we're kind of lifting up with the um, with our paper towel, but you can just keep, you can get a new paper towel. I usually just fold it up like that, the paper towel. And then the next thing we can do is, I won't do it now because it makes so much noise, the blow dryer on the, on the video. But what you can do is if you want to keep this w paint from flowing back into the reflection under the wall, if you're having that issue like I am, like this, what you have to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video right now and blow dry this quick so this dries and I don't keep having this wash flowing into that area because you can see how it keeps flowing into that area like that. So let's do that. So all right, I'll be right back after I blow dry off this wash right here a little bit so that it stops from flowing back into the reflections of these walls. Alright, so I just used the blow dryer again to keep the water from back flowing into the reflections of these walls. We talked about that. 
just before we stop the tapes. So now we're pretty much uh, home free. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a little more, um, maybe a little bit of the um, blue and green. Blue and green. And I'm just going to do a couple of the, like, a little bit of the choppiness of the water here. So maybe in the... Here in the in the foreground, there might be a little bit of, and then I can take a spritzer bottle even and just kind of spritz that on there, kind of loosen that up a little bit, just so we have a little bit of the, um, you know, a little bit of the uh, choppiness of the water, a little bit of um, texture to it, like that, and then we just do the vertical like this vertical lines across like that that gives it the feeling of water if you take the lines and just do some vertical lines like this and then I think finally what we'll do is we'll maybe we'll take a um, we'll use a needlepoint brush like this a really fine brush And we'll get some darker. So I'll use again red, yellow, and blue to make a dark, almost like a um, a really dark deep green. I think that's the darkest you can almost get with these three primaries that we're using. If you use too much blue, it becomes very very blue. So you want to have lots of blue in there, but you want to definitely add red and yellow. To keep it like a really super dark green and a, a super dark green looks like really good because it's sort of like not too toward the cool side the blue and but we do need a lot of the blue in there to get that uh, dark look to it so we're going to take our um, tissue dry off a little bit of the paint like that just so we don't have tons of paint on the end of our brush like this and then we're just going to do some some tree limbs and things just for a little bit of detail you add these few little bits of detail into your painting like this now as we're finishing up and you can't believe how great it looks so I, I'm just going to do a few final bits of tree limbs and you can put them in too where the light where you left those light spots like that is really good if you can leave some lights showing through to the background to the back of the sky here and there like we did over here and that's where you put these now these details with these tree limbs and things and branches and you would do these more toward the center over here that's sort of where we're going to have our focal point this area here So I'm just going to start to, you know, make some branches and tree limbs and things over here. Some over here. And again, I want to make them over here where the focal point is, which is in this area here. So you'll see that I'll start to maybe make a few tree limbs and branches over here. Like that. Just a few here and there, not too many. It's easy to take, go overboard and do too many um, type details like this. Same thing here. A couple of just little bits of indications of some branches and twigs and things. I wouldn't do too many, maybe a few here and there. Like that maybe a few here a couple more over here like this sort of like that and I think I need one more bit of uh, maybe some like orangey green I think over here like 
this. I don't want to have that. I think it looks better like that. So we have the bridge kind of over here. A little bit of a darker bit there. But I think that's it. I don't think we should do too much more. Maybe a couple more speckles here. Just on the wall here to make that stone, these stone walls look good. Like that. We could even make some stone indications of stonework. Put a couple, just a couple shapes of stones, very lightly, and that could look kind of good. Just to give it a bit of same thing over here. A couple of stone shapes, maybe just some round, kind of round shapes or polygonal shapes. And if you just put in a few round shapes, like, um, or, you know, kind of pointy shapes or small rock shapes, like this, here and there, it really does kind of give you that feel of it's, it looks like um, some stone walls here. I think those look really good. Stone walls look really good. So then we have a couple more there, a little bit of dots of round stone shapes. And you change the colors around so you don't want to make them all the same color. You just want to keep changing the colors of the stones if you can, like that. And they can be any old shape you want them to be. It's your happy stone walls here. You make them the way you want to. more little speckles here a little bit of splashes and then you might have a few too in the reflections but not too many so you might make a few little indications of some speckles in the water just a little bit but you wouldn't see much at all but if you just put a few little indications of it then the mind whoever's looking at the painting is going to go oh yeah oh that's a reflection of the wall because you see that it's um, sort of like mirroring down in there because we're kind of reflecting everything down stone here, stone here, stone here, stone here into the reflection here, stone here, reflection over here over here, stone over here, reflection down there couple, you know, here and there, Not doesn't have to be that many just a few, a couple and that's all you need is those few little bits of detail in the reflections in the water and it really does kind of make it uh, look like it's it's all harmonizing together and everything is when the viewer looks at it they feel like it's they're getting the sensation that it looks correct all right thanks so much for coming by we've had a lot of fun creating our painting here We've created the painting and the glazing technique. We're happy to be working as beginners. We always remember watercolor is a journey. We just take our time with it, have fun, enjoy the process, and we don't worry about if things aren't looking great every painting. We just keep working at it. Each painting is like a practice session, basically. We look at it that way. Then maybe after four or five years, we might start saying to ourselves, okay, these are looking like, you know, better paintings and I can maybe, I mean, it depends how fast you go, how much you practice. If you practice a lot, you'll notice that your paintings will start to really improve drastically. If you're practicing a fair amount or, you know, an okay amount, you're still going to have a lot of improvement, no matter how much you practice. If it's just a little bit, 
that's good. If you can practice just a little bit as you go, you're going to see improvements all the time. I mean, if you just paint once every two or three months, you probably won't see a lot of uh, advancement. But if you're painting on a somewhat regular basis, and you know, you'll, you'll see improvement always. And that's what Roy's kind of looking for is working on things a little bit here and there, and then we'll definitely have some good improvements as we go. And uh, I think this is what we're looking for. A good glazing technique here as we finish up. A little more details here and there. And um, again, have fun with your paintings. I hope you enjoyed this. Thumbs up if you like paintings like this and tutorials like this. I'll keep creating more. Um, again, a simple approach of just using three colors. And uh, so I hope you, again, had a great time. Let's get together again soon, and we'll see you. And uh, have a great morning, a great evening, and a great afternoon. And bye-bye uh, for now.